What's up guys? Classy Metal here. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about something that I've spent entirely too much time going through and going over uh, in the past day or so. I, I spent a ton of time with it yesterday and I've already been perusing it again this morning. Uh, what I'm talking about is the newest issue, issue number seven from Soul Grinder Zine. Um, Soul Grinder Zine is a Extreme music, extreme artwork, movie type stuff, zine. And a zine, I'm sure most of you watching this channel, you're already familiar with what zines are. They were a staple in the underground in the 80s. Uh, they've been around forever. They uh, were around through the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. They kind of disappeared and are now uh, making a comeback. And as someone who is a proponent of physical media, a proponent of physical music, this is something that I can really get behind. Uh, as you know, I've been a proponent of the Morgrot magazine that John over at Fallen Asylum has been doing. And uh, Paul, the the main uh, my driving force behind Soul Grinder, was gracious enough to message me on Instagram and ask if I would be interested in doing a review of uh, Soul Grinder Zine. Up to that point, I was unfamiliar with Soul Grinder Zine, and I'm glad that... Uh, I was given this opportunity. I was very humbled that he asked me to do so. And uh, I'm very glad because I found a great, a ton of great stuff through this already. Uh, he sent me, I'll just go through with what he sent me. He sent me a sticker, which I am very thankful for because if you watch this channel enough, you know that I've been uh, tireless, tirelessly working on filling the front face of a cabinet, a huge cabinet. So that sticker will be put to great use. Also sent me a little business card for uh, Soul Grinder Zine has all the contact info and that type stuff. That will all be linked up in the description. I'm gonna link up everything. As I talk about the stuff, I will tell you the stuff that is going to be linked in the description. There will be will be quite a bit, so definitely hit that uh, see more, that little arrow down there. Check out the, what, what all this stuff has to offer and uh, find out where you can get a copy of this for yourself if you watch this video and feel so inclined. He also sent me this uh, compilation CD. Um, at the moment, I believe the uh, the ones that I the issue sevens that I saw for sale going right now are coming with a cassette. I saw that there were some pictures of this on the uh, on the Soul Grinder Zine Facebook. This is a little uh, six track compilation CD. I found some great stuff on this. I'm going to go through this a little bit deeper uh, a little bit later in the video. And then what we all came for the meat and potatoes, the actual Soul Grinder Zine. Like I said, uh, zines have been around forever. Uh, this zine, like many of the others that I've uh, come in contact with, is basically uh, revolving around the heavy metal, the extreme music underground. There is a ton of underground material in this. I found some killer stuff already. Obviously, there is a ton of material in the zine. There is no way that I've gone through and read every single bit of this uh, between yesterday and today. I'm going to highlight the parts that I have read, what I did enjoy, and just kind of go through it that way. Um, the artwork on the front, that's already a, a, a plus for me. I, I, did, I really dig that artwork, that kind of campy, uh, old school death metal vibe looking artwork going on. The gratuitous nudity. There goes the monetization for this video. After you first get into it, uh, you start off with the uh, a little festival lineup looking ad there. Uh, I miss concerts. I hate it. it look, almost looks like the country is about headed back to another lockdown. I hate it. I miss shows. I want shows back so bad. Then you have the little editorial page giving credit where credit is due for all the different uh, sections, parts, and stuff that we're going to flip through here. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on each one. I am going to highlight the things. That, uh, that, that struck out to me, the things that I really dug. And uh, I definitely thank you guys. If you're following this channel, I think a lot of you will really dig the stuff in this. Uh, as I said, it's going to be linked up in the description. You can pick these up. What I saw, they're running for about 15 bucks, and that is shipping included in the U.S. I could be wrong on that price point, but that is what I saw. I saw a distro, I know, selling those. And that was the price point. It was 15 bucks and free shipping in the U.S. So just uh, be on the lookout for that. It's a killer deal with the stuff you get, especially when you're getting a compilation on either a CD or a cassette involved. Second page, I was uh, I was like excited to see it. And then I got kind of sad because I realized it had been like a year since I went to that show. And then I got the missing shows. It was the uh, Sacred Reich flyer. And it has the Awakening uh, album cover. And it has all the tour dates that they did last year. 
when they were on tour with Toxic Holocaust and Guar. I saw Sacred Rite last year, but they were on a little offshoot. They were between stops, and uh, they did a, a headlining tour in Memphis, and I happened to saw that. And I was looking at the dates for this, and I saw that their, uh, their Tennessee dates were first part of November, and then it kind of clicked in my head that it had been an actual year since I saw them. I was like, man, I miss shows. So, yeah. Then we have uh, Lectern. We have an interview with the uh, band Lectern. They are an old-school, uh, brutal death metal band. I, I really dug their stuff. I had not heard of Lectern uh, before reading this, and apparently they've been around since 99. Uh, so I was kind of disappointed in myself having not heard from that band. Decided to check them out. I did dig what I heard. I was going to purchase a CD, but the only CDs that I could find were from overseas, and I did not want to pay $30 to have uh, a CD shipped here. So that was kind of disappointing. They have some stuff up on Bandcamp, uh, some digital copies and that type stuff, so I may just have to bite the bullet and eventually just pick up a digital copy for the time being. Pretty good little interview there. I did read through it. Obviously, it was enough to make me want to check out the material, and I did dig that band's material. Next up, well, then you turn the page and you have an ad for some Riddick art. Uh, I can be a proponent for anything that highlights some artwork of Mark Riddick. I do enjoy just about everything that Mark Riddick does. Then there's a another interview with a band called Luna, Luna and Sanguinum. Luna and Sanguinum, I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, very good stuff. Uh, this is a band. I actually uh, I messaged them on Facebook. So if they're watching this, check your messages on Facebook to see if they had any physical copies uh, available of their EP, uh, Global Bloodbath. It's some brutal, heavy stuff. Fantastic, old school sounding death metal. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I saw an old Facebook. I kind of went and stalked their Facebook page. And uh, I saw that they had uh, said that they would have CD copies when they played live. I know that live shows have been kind of put on hiatus uh, as of late, uh, not as of late for the majority of the year. So I had my fingers crossed that maybe they still had some physical copies. I sent them a message on Facebook asking if I could buy one. So if you guys in uh, Luna and Sanguinum, Sanguinum are watching this, check their messages and get back to me. Uh, very good uh, death metal band. out of I believe they're out of Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, somewhere around in there. I really dug what I heard. Uh, talking about some future plans of some albums, how they respect uh, physical format collectors and that type stuff. So I'm hoping that they have uh, some CDs left. Then you have some ads and some artwork. Uh, the artwork, I'm not going to show every single artwork that's in the zine, but you get this uh, gory, uh, black and white, nasty looking artwork. I, I can really dig the stuff that I'm seeing in this. Uh, that's something that really sticks, sticks out to me. Have some more artwork and then an interview with the uh, thrash metal band Cruel Bomb. This is another band out of Pennsylvania. As I said, this zine is out of Pennsylvania in the U.S. So you're going to get a ton of underground U.S. material in this. A lot from that general region of Pennsylvania and Illinois that I was talking about. They also highlight some international bands and that type of stuff as well. So you're not just pigeonholed to that one area of the country. You're going to get some uh, material from all over. But there is a hotbed of stuff coming out of that area. And uh, this scene is in the perfect uh, geographic location to, to highlight and spotlight some of that stuff. Uh, Cruel Bomb. Good stuff. Uh, good thrashy stuff. I actually purchased their latest EP on Bandcamp entitled uh, Trinity Terror. That one will be linked up in the description as I've uh, purchased a physical copy. I think a lot of you guys that follow this channel will enjoy it as well. So that type of stuff. Anything that I have linked in the description, as I said before, I'm going to tell you right now. And, and you can just click down there, check it out for yourself, and I think you'll like it. I dug Cruel Bomb. Unfortunately, that was the only physical copy that they still had left of, uh, well, the only release that they still had physical copies left of. They had a previous EP, but that one was sold out. I did pick up the Trinity Terror CD, so uh, I was stoked to find something new through the zine. That is what it's all about, to spotlight these underground bands. And once that CD comes in, I think that was uh, originally released in January. It will probably pop up on a Seven Deadly Spins video and get more exposure through this channel. Uh, you flip through, you have the little interview there with uh, with Cruel uh, <clears throat> Cruel Bomb. Sorry, went blank there for a second. Then you have uh, some little cartoon comic looking things in here. That's tight. That's some good stuff as well. I'm not going to get just too much into all of that. That's something you need to purchase it and pick out for yourself. Uh, then we have a, a spotlight of a band called Ritual Moon. Uh, this is a black and thrash metal band. And apparently they've been uh, 
picking up some exposure in the U.S. They're out of California, and uh, apparently a lot of people had already heard of this band. I did not, and I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I have not heard them. I did purchase their EP. Uh, I had to do a digital purchase on, on Bandcamp. Their physicals were sold out. Uh, I am currently in the process of searching out a CD copy of their uh, sold out. I think there was only 100 copies made of their CD, but it's a very good uh, black and thrash metal from Ritual Moon there. I think uh, this is another band that I think a lot of you people that follow my channel will really enjoy. It will be linked up in the description as well, so I hope you guys take the time to, to check it out. The interviews on this are very well done, very thought out. It's not just they didn't feel rushed or just trying to throw something into zine to fill space it, it was very well thought out some of the uh some of the questions are thought out and, and gives you a bit more of insight of where some of these bands are coming from so i definitely appreciate that uh we have some more artwork and some more ads uh this was a band that i haven't checked out yet that was in here a band called encryptment uh i dig that artwork next to them this is one that i have not had a chance to read up on yet and check out as i said i have not had time to go through all of this stuff yet, but uh, that one should be pretty good because Paul actually did the uh, the interview on that one. So looking forward to giving that one a read. Who knows, I may find some more, like I need to be spending more money, but I may find some more uh, material that I need to seek out and purchase. Uh, here's another uh, Pennsylvania band called Fatal Agent. They are also uh, highlighted in this uh, in this little compilation CD that I'm going to go through in a bit. I dug their stuff pretty well. Uh, they have some stuff on Bandcamp that's pretty good. I have not uh, pulled the trigger on it yet, but they kind of have like a, that uh, despite being from uh, Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, they had that kind of uh, LA thrash vibe going on in a lot of their music. I, and that's very hit or miss for me sometimes. I did dig their stuff. They had an old school thrash metal vibe going on so that is a band that i'll probably revisit i did dig their track that they had on this uh on this compilation entitled pain asylum that was a pretty good pretty good stuff there flipping along uh we have a another uh thrashy death metal band this is uh, out of bethlehem pennsylvania entitled Dissentience. Dissentience. Uh, I checked them out on Bandcamp. They did not have physicals. They only had uh, digitals for their EP, but their stuff sounded good. Mask of Pretense was a very, uh, I think it was like four tracks long, but it was a solid little uh, demo that they had going on there. Also have a little ad for Awakening Records. So that's pretty good. You even have, not only are you focusing on underground bands, you have underground distros, underground labels that are highlighted in the zine. That is something that uh, I can definitely be a proponent of. I uh, have some art, some Dahmer art, and then you have uh, Grave Huffer. They were highlighted in Metalhead Box. I got a cassette uh, last year, I think. It, it's been a little bit, but there's some pretty good uh, metal out of Illinois as well. I think they're out of Mil Illinois. I don't know. At this point, man, it's like I knew... New information comes in and old information goes straight out. It's crazy. Uh, some more artworks going on. Nasty looking stuff. Uh, a nice interview with Horrendous with uh, Jamie and uh, and uh, Damien of Horrendous. And uh, that one kind of caught me off guard. I was not expecting Hor Horrendous to be in this. If you're watching this video, I know for sure that you know who Horrendous are. They are a killer, killer death metal band. Uh, the Chills was an absolute classic album. Good little uh, interview there, right there in the middle. I think that was the sweet spot for it, perfect place for it. Catches you off guard. You're like, hey, Horrendous is in here, and you're drawn completely back in, and you end up spending even more time uh, dug and steeped into this uh, this zine. Uh, you have some, some interviews with... Uh, I think this is a filmmaker. Then you have one with a record exec, a former record exec. So pretty interesting stuff there. It gives you some insights, stuff that you may have not of ever even thought about before. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, let's see what else we got. We've got some reviews. You got some album reviews. I have not taken the time to go through all of these album reviews. Uh, I've kind of thumbed through it, and I was impressed to see that it's not all just brand new stuff that they're reviewing. They are kind of going back and revisiting some stuff that maybe has been overlooked, uh, been slept on, and just uh, 
tucked away on a shelf and forgotten for entirely too long. So, I mean, the, the majority of the reviews are 2020, 2019 type stuff, but I did see some 2017s in there. Um, and so a little some stuff that had been out for a little bit longer, so I can definitely appreciate that. Uh, on top of just the the album reviews, you have some like general band uh, spotlights and exposures. That was pretty interesting as well. Uh, I got to read up, discover some new bands that way. We have uh, more artworks, more reviews. So it, it will take forever. I got a little fat material here. Uh, got some models. And uh, man, that she's got to be my favorite one that I saw in here. Uh, Alyssa, Alyssa Nicole from the U.S. That was go. Let me set that. I might need that for later. No, I'm just I, I, okay. Uh, let's get it back to uh, back. But yeah, man. All right, and then <laughs> we've got uh, Morelia from Peru. Sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, Classy looking photos there. Uh, uh, Baz Tart artworks, flyer. Um, as I said, there were some things. Uh, highlighting some bands. This is not album reviews, it's just uh, like band spotlights. That is pretty neat. Found out about some bands and read up on some bands that I'd never heard of, and it makes me want to uh, put in the, the legwork and actually go hunt those bands down and discover those bands. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we got some more ads. Uh, we got some movie reviews. There is a review for uh, It Chapter 2 that was pretty funny that's in here. Um, some horror reviews. I believe there's a comic at the back. It's called The Vinyl Killer. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty funny. It's got this guy, uh, this monster wearing like the Slayer helmet and stuff that's going through. Have not made it all the way through the... Uh, the comic yet but what i was reading up on was pretty funny so i'm definitely uh gonna spend some time with that it seems like the majority of this you've got your horror uh theme stuff there's a ton of thrash metal type stuff going on old school uh death metal and that's what i can feel like most zines are are more catered to i think that was the original idea behind zines in the first place there was so much death metal underground death metal underground thrash metal going down and they kind of go hand in hand you've got your, the thrashy death metal bands and and death sounding thrash metal bands and uh zines fit perfectly into that whole concept and this this fits that narrative perfectly um i don't have a bad thing to say about this you have an interview with matt pike of unburied uh this man has been uh, Plotting along in the underground as long as I can remember. I can remember being a teenager and uh, finding stuff from Matt Pike that he had been part of in One Man Projects. Unburied is pretty good. Um, self 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 sustained death metal. I have some of their albums, some of his albums, I guess, in my collection. I kind of uh, found Matt Pike and, and Unburied about the same time that I found Putrid Pile, and, and they kind of played hand in hand uh, with stuff that I listened to. Uh, there's some like fan pictures of uh, Soul Grinder Zine there in the back. Some more models. Can't go wrong with that. So, but yeah, I was uh, super impressed with this zine as a whole. I mean, it is a ton of material to go through. There, hey, there's actually the sticker uh, stabbyhamlet.com. It's got the uh, the little sticker that I received in this. I'm wondering if they did the printing. I'm not sure, but we have some more ads for uh, labels, a couple band things, and then it has like the little closing uh, credits and that type of stuff at the back as well. So definitely, uh, definitely take the time. They actually Soul Grind Zine has been around since 2012. So um, long live printed zines. I, I I can get behind that completely. I I'm a bit embarrassed and uh, disappointed in myself for not having not uh, checked out Soul Grinder Zine already uh I'm, I'm super thankful to be able to get on board now i think uh as i said issue seven is out now paul said that there will be two comp two more compilations released in uh in 2021 and the issue eight of soul grinder should be coming out right around the corner in january so if you want to go on and jump on jump on board and get soul grinder seven now You'll have uh, something in, in a couple months. To This can hold you over until the new issue comes out in January. As I said, that's up in the description. I'm going to link up everything I can find for Soul Grinder, where I see them being sold and that type of stuff. That way you can get your own copy. 
I am a huge av advocate for this. I definitely think uh, you guys will enjoy this. It is definitely well worth the money. You get a ton of material, a ton of bang for your buck in that. Just going to go through this little compilation uh, that he sent me as well. This is Soul Grinders. That he, so, sorry, my mouth just went dry. This is uh, Soul Grinder Zine, Deadly Mosh Revenge, Six Way Split. And there is some killer stuff on this. Uh, it is a well done little compilation CD. As I said uh, earlier, there it looks to be a, uh, a cassette going out with the, the latest copies. That is, uh, you can see that when you go check out their, their website and that type stuff. Uh, the first one I talked about, Fatal Agent. They were highlighted in the actual zine itself. Good little, they have a, a song on here called Pain Asylum. Very good stuff. Uh, old school sounding thrash metal out of Pennsylvania. Good stuff. And it's got them, it's got each band highlighted on the uh, liner booklet there. Uh, the next song was the, uh, the Donner Party, Serial Thrasher. This one I wasn't super big on. I mean, it's fun. It's that pizza thrash, obviously. You get that, uh, that vibe. I did check out like their band camp and stuff and that, I checked out some of their releases on Bandcap, and they're huge on that that party thrash, that uh, that pizza thrash. I know that's some things that's not everybody's cup of tea, but those that love that, if you're into that, I think you will really dig it because it, I mean, it, it fit really in with really well with the other uh, other bands in that genre that I've heard. They they definitely uh, could stand out doing so. Next up, we have a uh, disruptor, disruptor. Sorry, I, I was trying to find some material on them. And uh, before I made this video and I kept typing in Disruptor and I was finding a complete different band and I was like, man, is this band nowhere? It's this Disruptor uh, band out of Peru. Very good uh, kind of black and thrash, very good nasty stuff. Couldn't find anything but digitals uh, on their material, unfortunately. <laughs> then there was a band that was hilarious to me called Dick Vomit. Uh, they have a song on here called Tree Rape and it is ridiculous uh, i checked out some of their other material and their other material is just as ridiculous it's it's hilarious is it something that i'm going to listen to all the time no is it something that some of you guys might listen to all the time possibly there are some of you i think could be uh proponents for for that for that band next up is a probably my favorite band that i found throughout this whole process uh this is a band called paralysis they are a thrash metal band out of the u.s um i want to say that they're out of, they're either out of Illinois or Pennsylvania. They're out of one of the two. I cannot remember, unfortunately, at this point. I am going to definitely link up their, uh, their Bandcamp in the description. I purchased a vinyl. I know I hardly ever purchase vinyl. They have the, their first album uh, on vinyl for ten bucks, and I think there was like six of those remaining. So that's going to be linked up in the description. I know some of you vinyl collectors may want to jump on that. They also have CD versions. I picked up a CD copy of their newest album probably the band that I spent the most money on out of this whole process, but I, I dug them quite a bit, which is unusual for me talking about thrash metal, about how much I dug it, because this is straight up thrash metal, but it is well performed. Uh, this band's going places. This is uh, Paralysis. On this little compilation, they had a, uh, a track called Misery. It was a live version of that uh, of that track. I, that's another reason I picked up the actual record because it had the two bonus tracks and the live track of Misery. Has Misery, the regular track, but I wanted the one that kind of got me into the band on a physical form, another physical format. If that makes any sense whatsoever. And then we have uh, Azotador uh, from Bolivia with Ceremonia de Possession. Some more thrash metal, straightforward thrash. I could not find a ton of uh, information on this band. So like I said, this is a zine that is that is uh celebrating the underground so there's gonna have you're gonna run into that sometimes where you actually have to dig and uh put in the work to find stuff when you find something that you like out of this but it is super rewarding anytime that you can get in the underground find things that a lot of other people have not found yet and kind of introduce people to that there there it's a feeling like no other it's the reason i started doing this channel it is the reason why this channel has been going for as long as it is, that it's been going just that feeling the the greatest compliment i ever received doing something like this is when someone jumps in the comments and says thanks for recommending me this band i just purchased this i just got this seeing people support bands that i found that i love through me is the, the greatest compliment that, that you guys could ever give me. Uh, I, I super, 
I cannot get behind this enough. Go check out Soul Grinder Zine. Get yourself a copy. Uh, once again, thank you, Paul. I, I definitely appreciate uh, you you uh, thinking enough of me to actually have me review this. I appreciate you, what you're doing for the underground music scene. Uh, it's something that, uh, that I, I definitely uh, thank you very, very much for. That's all I've got for today. Um, check this stuff out. Check the bands out. Everything that I think you need to see out of this personally that I found that I like that I want you to see is in the description. So definitely get in that description, check it out. Stay classy, stay metal. I will see you all very soon. I promise.